Well, good morning, church. And uh, thank you, worship team, for leading us so great in uh, worshiping God. And also, thank you for all of you, uh, ushers and teachers, and together we, we can do the Lord's work. Together we can do a great ministry. Uh, we can share with one another. We can also grow together in that way. Well, this morning, uh, we're going to start a new series of messages. I am not sure how many messages I'm going to be preaching on that series, but uh, I trust that I will do at least four, five, or six, or seven of them. And the series is called Connecting with God. So the title of the message this morning is God's Faithfulness. And so we want to look at that. And also, uh, just for those of you that observe carefully uh, uh, how it's been preached, I uh, just want to say this to you. In the last many years, four, five, six years, I have done most of my preaching what is called exploratory preaching. You uh, have a passage of Scripture, for example, verses 1 through 12 or 40 through 30, uh, 47, and then you have that passage, and then you explore it, and you preach from it. And I do believe that is one of the best ways to get very familiar and known of God's Word. And that's a great way of doing it, and it's probably one of the best ways of doing it. As a matter of fact, there are church, churches around us, they will tell you if you do not preach that way, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, or they may even want to condemn you as, as sin if you do it differently. I disagree, but I have decided here for the next several times, I will not do it that way. I'm going to do it what I call more of a topical message. I have a topic that we want to look into what the Word of God has to say about the topic. And so therefore, then you not necessarily just preach from these 12 verses or 10 verses. Uh, we want to look at a topic and see what has God to say about it. And so then it changes it a little bit. It looks a little different. But I do still believe we can grow through that. We can uh, mature through that. We can minister to one another. And God can do great things through that as well. And that is what I want to do here for the next uh, several times that I, when I do preaching. So I'm thinking about connecting with God. So what that means is we want to look at how to establish a meaningful personal relationship with God. I think that's very important. You know, in other words, how do you connect to a God who is mighty, who is all-powerful? How do you connect with a God like that? And you know, and I think you do the same as you connect with other people. It's the same way. You know, you determine some basic information about their character. And I think the first thing, when you want to connect with another person, one of the first things that you want to determine is, can I trust this person? Right? Because that will be a key in order to get good connections with that person. One thing that we do as a church in leadership, whether it is mission board or church board or elders or deacon, we, we have a, if somebody comes into a leadership team, we have a document that we give them and we ask them to read through that. And at the, at the end of it, we ask them to put their name on as a sign that I agree with that. Why is that? Because we want them to see how a leader should conduct himself. We want them to see uh, what that looks like to be a leader in this team. And so when they look at that and they read that and then they sign it on the bottom, they are saying to the rest of the team, I will be faithful in this team. And you can trust me in this team. Right? That's the purpose of that. So in order to have good connection with somebody... The first thing you want to establish is and, and determine is, can I trust this person? You know, the same it is with God. The same it works with God. Can I trust God? Is he going to be faithful? 
And so I'm going to ask maybe about four questions today about God's faithfulness. And we are also going to find the answers from God himself. And we're going to find it from God's word. You know, I believe a meaningful relationship with God always begins with his word. So you can't expect to have a meaningful relationship with anyone until you get to know the special someone. A meaningful relationship with God always starts with getting into the Word of God. If you will go into the Word of God, you will learn some things from God. And you will also gain understanding of God. And so in order that you will get to know God, with that you will be able to also gain an intimate and personal relationship with Him. And so... It requires quality time in God's Word because God reveals Himself through His Word. And so, I want to start us off this morning with a story that all of you my age know this story, and it's quite a bit younger as well. I realize there are some younger people in here that will probably know, not know this story because this story happened in 2003. So, if you don't remember 2003, then you will not remember this story. But this story is about a man named, or his family named Rick Husband. Rick Husband was the commander of a space shuttle that unfortunately and tragically blew up. I think many of you remember that story, right? The space shuttle was coming back and it blew to pieces. I think some of the pieces even ended up landing in Oklahoma, if I remember correctly. I'd, I could be wrong on that. I don't remember exactly, but I know there was pieces coming to earth from that. So the wife of Rick's husband and, and their two children, they were watching the father, the husband, come back from space where he had spent many days. Everything looked good until they entered the earth's atmosphere. Suddenly everything went tragically wrong, and it was a great, great tragedy. Rick and Evelyn husband, they were believers, and they loved the Lord Jesus Christ dearly. And so this is what Evelyn husband said when she was asked about this incident. She said, deep inside, I knew that God would walk me through this somehow because God had walked me through crisis in my life in the past. You see, Evelyn's husband, she had a connection with God. And she knew that God would take her through the darkest days of her life. And he would take her through the difficult times that she would ever encounter in her life. And listen, folks, that is the kind of a connection that we want to have with God. Amen? That's the connection we want to have. That we know God will get us through no matter what will happen in life. We do not want to have any false teaching, any false hope. You want what is accurate, what is right, what is honest, what is true. You know, the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a lot of pro false prophets and teachers that will arise. And boy, are they rising today, folks. And they wanted to come and bring a false teaching that gives people false hope. And we want righteous hope. We want to have such a deep relationship with God that when our lives are turned upside down, when things happen in our lives that we just can't explain, difficulties we don't understand and we don't expect, we want to have that kind of strong connection with God like Evelyn husband. So how do you connect with a God? How is it possible to get to know God? And the answer is simple, and I already answered it before. Go into his word. Go into his word, and you will learn, and you will connect with the character of God. You will understand that he is going to help you and deal with you no matter what happens in life, just like Evelyn's husband did. So, first of all, you know, when I think of connecting with God, I think 
and depth. Think, uh, connecting with God's faithfulness. Okay? Connecting with his faithfulness. That means that, that we are going to know enough about God that we will anticipate how he is going to act in every situation in our life. And we will know the truth. We will know it accurately that we will have a good anticipation how God will respond. You know, Evelyn's husband knew God had been faithful to her in the past. She knew that he would be faithful to her in the future. So the first question I ask is, what is the length of God's faithfulness? You know, you read the Bible, you see God was faithful to the people in the Old Testament. You read the New Testament, you see God was faithful in the past to the people in the New Testament. And, and maybe some of you had grandparents and, and, and parents, they were Christians, and you saw how God was faithful to them. And, and how he walked with them and walked them through things of life and how faithful God was. But what about me? Is God going to be faithful to me as well? Is he also going to be faithful to my children? Is he going to be faithful to my grandchildren and great-grandchildren? And the Bible has a lot to say about it. Look what the Bible says about it in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. The Bible says there, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant to love, of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. So it says God is the faithful God. He is faithful. He keeps his love and his faithfulness through all generations, for everyone that loves him and keeps his command. So the Bible says that, that God is always going to be faithful to us, to every generation. Psalms 119, verse 90, it says, Your faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalms 89, 1 says, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. Now, if you are to ask God a question, are you going to be faithful to me like you have been faithful to the people before me? God will always say yes. I will be faithful to you and to all generations. See, God doesn't change. We change. The world changes, right? Everywhere around us it changes. But God stays the same. He doesn't change. Therefore, he will be faithful. And when I think of faithfulness that God will have through all generations, I can't think also about how every generation impacts the next generation. Have you ever thought about that? And when I'm saying this, I have to say that I have already had an impact on my children. And I still continually have an impact on them. And not only that, my sons are grown-ups, they are married. And now I have also an impact on my daughter-in-laws. I know I do. And not only that, I know I have an impact on my grandchildren. They watch me closely. And it, and it has an impact on them. Is, is grandpa going to be faithful? We have an impact on our next generation. And if God gives me a life long enough, maybe i would be having an opportunity to be having an impact on my grandchildren. And great-grandchildren, I mean. It's important that we are faithful and that we have an impact on the generation that comes behind us. The truth is we have an impact. We all have an impact on a generation after us. And we need to remain faithful because God will be faithful to them as well. Just like Evelyn's husband knew that God will be faithful in her future because she had already experienced his faithfulness in the past, we can trust God. He will be faithful to us. Now let's think of another question that you might want to ask God. God has been faithful in the past Will he be faithful to us today 
And then the next question that maybe troubles a lot of people. I am so afraid that if I would fail God, is he going to give up on me? That's, that's one of the things that, that were in my life that took me much longer to just surrender my life to Jesus. That was right this, this right here. If I will fail God, is he going to give up on me? I think that's a troubling question. Is God going to be faithful to me when I fail God? I mean, how is God going to react if I am weak in temptation? How's he going to react? Again, let's go right back to the Bible and see what the Bible has to say. And the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, Paul writes to the Thessalonian church, he says, Brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from the wicked and evil people. Now watch this. He says, for not everyone has faith, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Okay. The promise is not that the evil one will not attack us. Okay. The promise is that God will guard us in the attacks of the evil one. Just before Jesus went to the cross, remember what Jesus prayed for his disciples in, in John chapter 17, verse 15? This is what Jesus prayed for them. He says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you will protect them from the evil one. In other words, Jesus prays that in the midst of temptation, God will show his faithfulness. He will show it. God is always going to be faithful to us. But you know, do you know when you are tempted the most to believe God's faithfulness? It's when you are being tempted the most to commit a sin. Or when you are tempted to believe a false hope. That's when you will test the faithfulness of God the most. What if evil strikes and attacks you tremendously? What if it sneaks an attack on you? Is God going to be faithful to me then? And again, this was already mentioned in Sunday school, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you that is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So God's faithfulness is always there. Even when we are tempted. Now, will God be faithful to me like he was faithful in the past? Yes, he will. Will God be faithful to me even when I am being tempted? Yes, he will. Because that is the character of God. Now let's think about one more thing. If I really mess up badly, should I really mess up badly and I have a choice in my life, am I going to yield to the leading and control of the Holy Spirit? Or am I going to yield and be led by my self-desires or by the evil one? And some words, I'm caught off guard and I dirtied my life with sin. Is God going to be ever able to forgive me? Now, it's one thing to be kept from the temptation. But it's another thing when you fall. How about if you fall? You know, we are all kept from some things, but we also all fall sometimes at some things. Here's the promise of God. You have to remember it talks about a child of God. 
we are walking with Jesus, following Jesus, listening to his voice. And then all of a sudden, we failed. We dirtied our life. What will happen? Is God going to be faithful? Will he ever be able to forgive me? 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 talks about that. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If you want to connect with a God who is faithful, the Bible presents that God will be faithful. Even in your toughest temptations in your life. The Bible also says God will be faithful even if you stumble and you mess up. Even then, God will be faithful to forgive you. You know, it, it's interesting uh, how we often do things as human beings. It's very interesting. Interesting that sometimes we beat ourselves up more than God beats us up. Have you ever noticed Sometimes we, we actually hold against ourselves some things and, and God already no longer holds that against us. I think if God is willing to release me from the penalty of that sin that I had committed, then the least I could do is to release myself from that penalty as well. Right? How do we do that? I think we do that by recognizing the faithfulness of God to me. That He is willing to forgive me and that I have also faith enough to recognize that if God has forgiven me, <coughs> if God has forgiven me, it's over. It's done. So I'm going to have to forgive myself as well, right? And that brings me to the final question. Can I trust God to be faithful with, that, to be faithful with my eternal salvation? <coughs> I know that this is a big issue among a lot of good people. Can I trust God to be faithful with my eternal salvation? This causes a lot of ar arguments among people. We even have people that totally disagree with what uh, I would say about it all around us, even in my own background. A and the thing is, the wisest thing is always to do is go back into God's word. See, sometimes our forefathers were wrong. Sometimes we are wrong. But, but God's word is never wrong. It's always right. So what does the word of God has to say about it? Is God going to be faithful with my eternal salvation? Let's recognize that God is able to give us eternal salvation. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12b, it says, I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. So it says that God is able to give me a permanent salvation. He is able to do that. Remember also the last couple of verses in Jude. Jude has only one chapter. It's a very short book. Verse 24 and 25, this is what it says. It says, To him who is able to keep me from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. When you look at those verses, you know that notice that little expression, He is able. God is able. He is faithful and He is able. He can. Now also I want to read Familiar verses, John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29. This is Jesus speaking here. This is what Jesus says. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, 
and they follow me. L let me just stop there for a minute, and I'll read those other verses after that. Are you listening to the voice of Jesus this morning? Or did you listen to the voice of Jesus yesterday? See, he's talking about a child of God, that he gave salvation, eternal salvation. He says, those are my sheep. They are listening to my voice. There are lots of voices speaking to you today. But you are a follower of Jesus. So you know the voice of Jesus in you. You're listening to his voice. So therefore, not only are you just a good listener to the voice of Jesus... You're not just having this head knowledge and knowing that Jesus is talking and you're listening, but you're also the doer. You are following him, he says. They follow me. So now, that, where, where is the promise? Is he faithful? He says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. So Jesus is telling us that God can give us a permanent salvation. We hear his voice. We follow him. We know him. We have a connection with him. He has given us eternal life. And that's a permanent salvation. The next question is then, if he is able to do it, is it his intention to do it? Right? And I think the answer is again, yes. In fact, God has provided certain safeguards to ensure our salvation, that it is permanent. For example, you are his sheep. You listen to his voice. You follow him. You are a child of God. And then you look at what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, 1. He says, my dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. Okay, as a child of God, we, 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 we listen to the voice of Jesus. We follow Jesus. We do not sin. So in other words, we don't go out and knowingly, willingly, and joyfully commit sins. And we are totally fine and cool with it. That is not what a child of God does. But he says, he writes this so that we will not sin. And here's the key. But if anyone does sin, as a child of God, that listens to the voice of Jesus, that follows him, then we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. We have this advocate that when we fail, when we dirty our lives, he's going to speak good on our behalf. We will apply 1 John chapter 1, 9, right? We will confess. Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. So he intercedes for us. He speaks good for us. He is there and leads us as we listen to his voice. And I'm not going to read it, but when you get to Ephesians chapter 4.30, the Bible also says that, that we have the presence of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is also going to be our guider, our director. He's the one that's going to show us how to live for Jesus, how to follow Jesus, how to listen to his voice, and, and he will make our path straight. That means our crooked uh, paths of sin and, 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 and wrongfulness, he's going to make those paths all straight. It's pretty clear from God's word that God will be faithful to all generations. He will be faithful to help us when we are tempted. He will be faithful to help us when we fall. He will be faithful to honor our salvation. These are big issues that God's word wants us to have that we understand because that gives us an intimate personal relationship with God. That gives us a connection with God. And when we're thinking about God and his abilities... There are really no big or small things for God. Have you ever noticed? There are things in our lives that are very big things, right? For God, they're not big. There are no big or small to God. We can trust God that he's going to be faithful to forgive us and give us what we need to forgive ourselves. And listen, folks, this is where we probably are very weak. 
there will also be times in our lives as God's children where we will also need to ask somebody else to forgive us. Right? Now, if you realize that you have wronged, you committed a sin, and you ask somebody to forgive you, how do you handle it if those people aren't faithful in giving forgiveness to you? How do you handle that? I, I want to say some very important things that can help us tremendously. First of all, if you have wronged somebody, you sinned against somebody, it is your responsibility before God to be honest and sincere and ask the person to forgive you that you wronged and sinned against. That is your responsibility. And if you do that or not, that is between you and God. Okay? Now, also, it is not our job to fight and wrestle forgiveness from those that we have wronged. It's not our job. Our job is to admit to God that we have wronged that he, and ask that he would forgive us. Our job is to be honest and sincere and ask the person to forgive us that we have wronged. But if that person, whether that person gives the forgiveness to you for what you have wronged them or not, that is between them and God. That's between them and God. Now, I'm just going to close it with that, but it, it actually is kind of hurtful to even think of this and say this, but my experience has been this, folks. Most people will never actually sincerely seek somebody else's forgiveness. They will just never do it. They will, they will craft up a story with a bunch of spider, spider web in it, add a kind of stuff in it that doesn't belong in there, and they will come out on the top with an excuse that they were actually not guilty, they did not wrong, and they did not sin. Therefore, I never have to apologize. That's what most people will actually do. That's a very sad note as, as followers of Jesus Christ. You know, my experience has also been that many times people will actually do give forgiveness with their words, but genuinely and honestly in their heart, they never forgave. They never forgave. They may claim it that that was a wound that needs time, it needs healing, but that healing never happens. It's always raw and, and hurts. And, and, and one way that you will find out very quickly if you should do them wrong six months from then, you will discover very quickly if they have genuinely forgiven you six months ago. Right? And I think there's so much that we can learn from this. That we should seek honest forgiveness if we have wronged, don't try to create a story just to dull our conscience that it is okay and there's nothing wrong. Some people say, you know what, just give it enough time, it will go away. And the thing is, eventually with time, you dull your conscience. With time, you have learned to live with it and have learned to be okay with it. But the truth is, the reconciliation, the connection and the love and the true forgiveness that God wants us also to have amongst each other never happens if you do that. But God is faithful. He will remain faithful. If you're a child of God and you should have messed it up, He will remain faithful. You can trust Him that He will forgive you if you're His child and that He has given you an eternal salvation. Now, the worship team can make their way up here and lead us in a closing song. But I want to say this for the closing. The biggest need that every one of us has, everyone that listens, the biggest need that everyone has is forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness of sin from God the Father. Forgiveness of sins of ourselves that we forgive ourselves. And forgiveness of others that we can truly walk in the freedom of forgiveness of sins that Jesus offers. 
That's our, our, that's our biggest need that we all have. And with that, I'm going to do a closing prayer. But I'm also going to say that we're going to have a prayer team that's going to come up here for the, during the closing song. If you have prayer needs, they would gladly pray for you. You know, maybe do you, I don't know what the Spirit of God has revealed to you, but maybe you are struggling with self-forgiveness. Or maybe you're struggling with the fact that God has, he, God truly forgiven you. Or maybe you are struggling with actually forgiving others that have really wronged you. Maybe somebody molested you as a child or rejected you. Or maybe you need healing or you're ill or you have a disease or whatever it is. The prayer team would love to pray for you because the thing is God calls us to not walk through this journey alone. And also I wanted you to think about this. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now our prayer team, are they righteous in their own? No, they're not. But through the blood of Christ, they are righteous before God. And whatever you go through in life, do you want the power of God to begin to move in that situation? Do you want to be fully an overcomer? The power of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It will affect you if you will ask them to pray for you. The hand of God will begin to move. And that is what we want to just offer you. If you have any needs, we should be here to pray for each other. Let us pray. Would you please stand for a prayer and also just remain standing for this song. Lord God, we're so thankful that you are God, that you are faithful, that we can have a connection with you, we can have a connection with your faithfulness, and we can trust you and rely on you no matter what will happen in life, no matter the struggles, the difficulties, uh, or the joys and the good times. You will walk us through. If we walk through valleys, you will walk us through them. You will be faithful in that. And if we can know you, we can have that relationship with you. And we are so thankful that you are faithful. I don't know the needs of the people here today, but I know that you have spoken, God, through, in their hearts through your spirit. And whatever needs they may have, whatever they may go through life, I pray that if they have needs or hurts or unforgiveness or don't know what to do with it, that they will just come and ask for prayer. And I pray that you will continually help us to grow in, in this relationship of trusting you and, and knowing that you will be faithful. And Lord, I, I pray that as we will leave today, that you will bless us and make us a blessing and also that you will uh, protect us and that we will be the light and the salt in this world, that people will see you, Jesus, in us and through us with our actions and also with our words. May you be glorified in all of it. In Jesus' name, amen.